Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Tim Hughes. I'm the uh, the author of uh, the book Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Changemakers. I'm the co-founder of Digital Leadership Associates, and with me today I have Marcus Leithwood. Um, Marcus uh, is um, CMO of a Sage reseller called Acuity Solutions. But I'll get uh, Marcus. You know, c c introduce yourself and do your little. Um, do your um, elevator pitch about who you are and what you're doing and what Acuity Solutions do and how that relates to Sage. Thanks very much, Tim. Thank, um, Tim, thank you for letting me join you. Um, Acuity are uh, a platinum take business partner. Um, we've been a business partner of Sage for 20 years um, and we have a globally unique portfolio that covers off uh, Sage startup solutions, scale up solutions, all the way through to the enterprise suites. Um, as a business partner, we've been through uh, a fairly fluid transformation over the last 12 months, really realigning ourselves to the transformation that Sage has been going through. Uh, it's been a phenomenal journey that we've been gone on, or we've gone on. Uh, so yeah, delighted to be on board. Thank you. So um, you, you sell to both large and, and small organizations. Um, what, what what you 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 talk about the fact that you've been on this social and digital transformation you know what was it like when you joined and and, and how have you seen the, the the development of things going forward so as a heritage business partner we were always pretty reliant on sage um okay. whether it's following the sage brand whether it's um receiving opportunities from them uh, but we've always had a vision in the last three years to try not to break the relationship with sage but almost to try and drive self-sufficiency self into us self yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a it's a challenging journey to go on as a small business however social and digital have really given us a platform um to change the culture of our entire organization um to bring social to the entire team um okay. and it's been a it, it, we've seen some really strong results from it Right. So this. So when you when you talk about social, we're not just talking about the sales team. We're talking right across the business, aren't we? Absolutely. So we have a, a sort of an ethos um, within the organisation that we want everyone to be involved in in how we communicate and how we're learning from our customers, how we can deliver a le better level of service. Um, at the same point as recognising social selling and, and the tools that come with that, um, really are for salespeople to be able to enhance the way they're communicating and identifying prospects. Um, okay. We use um, Sales Navigator as a tool. Um, we use that across our sales team, account management team, operations team, and our support team, uh, really just to provide us with greater insight into what our customers are looking at, what our customers are saying. Um, and it drives a really, really good collaborative nature uh, across the entire organization. Okay, so it's 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 about collaborating externally with the with the prospects and customers, but also collaborating internally amongst because uh, you don't have, have developers because Sage do that, but develop, um, uh, collaborating with the support teams and 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 the the account management teams as well. Yeah, I mean to be fair, we actually we actually have a very strong development team um, who. Okay, my, my mistake. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Um, it does, it's, it's another of those slightly peculiar scenarios. So we have a development team uh, that actually spans whether it's Sage Live development, whether it's Sage 200, okay. Sage 300, all the way through to X3. Um, but even within that capacity, it's about being uh, one organization. Um, and if we see something that could influence a, uh, a salesperson's interaction with a customer, then we're, we're, we're all very collaborative in the way we try and bring that to their attention or if we're recognizing the need for something new within the solutions, then we're able to take that to the development team. Um, and it really has become a sort of a, a backbone of, of how we want to be engaging internally and externally. Um, okay. I'd say we're probably still only 60, maybe 65% away on the journey, but at that point, um, transformation in my opinion is, is ever evolving um i'd hate to think there's going to be a day where i think there's nothing new to learn um, and i don't think that day will ever come
you, you also are in a situation because as as a reseller and there and, and there are lots of resellers of 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 organizations like Oracle and SAP and Sage, where you're a lot of the time that you're spending is actually working on the relationship with with your your mothership, your the sages and the people like that. Absolutely. I mean, I think everyone in our organization can use social in a different way. Um, right. I personally, in my sort of capacity as CMO, spend a lot of time engaging with the Sage executive team um, yeah. in, in via social channels. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, trying to drive further alliances. So recently, we've become a Salesforce partner. We've become a Kimball Applications partner, a Fair Sale partner, um, and all of this has become considerably easier um, by using social, by using digital, by engaging with people. Um, across different platforms because it just gives us a, a far more flexible way of being able to build that dialogue and rapport. And, and do you see, and, and, and at the end of the day, um, I used to I used to run an Oracle partner and, and, and while we were very friends with our other Oracle partners, but they were actually also competitive. Yeah, absolutely. And do you, do you see this as a way of getting competitive advantage uh, over, the, over the channel partners? Um, I'd like to think that the relationships that we've been able to foster um, have given us an opportunity to put ourselves ahead of the curve. Um, okay. I would imagine um, that other business partners in the Sage community will, will categorically start uh, um, following the new Sage Partner Program. Um, they will start adopting the new technologies. Um, whether anyone actually takes the decision to be across the entire portfolio of the global solutions, I'm not sure. Um, but from my point of view, being a London-based business, um, the opportunity to engage with startups and be able to provide them with advice and guidance um, for solutions like Sage One, which is about 10 pounds a month, or whether it's to medium-sized businesses and they're looking at whether it's in the heritage portfolio of, uh, of solutions like Sage 200 or Sage 300, um, but more importantly, Sage Live, from my point of view, we've been a a really strong journey that we have gone on with Sage really together um, all the way through to X3. I mean, they okay. all require a very different way of communicating with um, the communities and the prospects Perfect. and even with Sage, but it, but it gives us a platform to be able to address those conversations in the right terminology, in the right manner. Um, so, so that. Okay. Can you talk me through um, how your salespeople are using um, 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 uh, social as a way of? Because you had you, you came, when we talked, um, you, you, you said you came up with a number of interesting facts. Um, but you know, what, what, what's the average salesperson doing day to day with social, and, and why is it enhancing what they they, they do? I think probably they're all at different stages of their um, adoption of social. Um, okay. We see some really, really strong um, results in terms of how we're engaging with prospects. Um, right. so that, how that's actually bringing and driving greater inbound traffic and inbound opportunities. Um, right. But at the same point, it's also how the account management teams are being able to engage with uh, decision makers outside of our, our normal contacts within customers. Um, right. Giving so is that is that going wider and deeper within the accounts? Yeah, I mean, without wanting to use like jargonistic words of like stickiness. Um, yes. But if we can identify where we have a relationship with a with a customer who has uh, a financial accounting solution with us, but we've got an opportunity to be able to uh, work with them for whether it's something like Fair Sale for H HCM or uh, Kimball for professional services automation. Salesforce for the so let's say CRM in, in that old terminology, I suppose. Um, the ability to engage with people where you've already got a relationship with somebody in that organization um, does give you a head start against competition. Now, that may be competition from outside of the Sage channel. It might be competition from another Sage business partner. Um, so depth of relationship becomes absolutely critical. And then using social as a way of going and finding these people and then engaging them and building relationships, is that right? Absolutely. I mean, wh whether you're doing that in a peer-to-peer, -peer, whether you're trying to get an introduction via your existing contact into yeah. new contact within a business, or whether you're trying to influence um, how our collaborator, or our, I suppose our, our all-in network of people, um, being a, a small business of about 60 people, 
Um, we've got about 400 customers, but those 400 customers span about 40 countries and five continents. So right, right. the depth of relationship that comes from just the sales team is actually quite small in comparison to the depth of relationship we have within our operations team to being an implemented solutions, added value to customers, um, whether that's in Azerbaijan, Australia, Brazil, the Falkland Islands, the US. Um, so those relationships really then give you a platform and give the sales team a platform to be able to say, how could I use the relationship that a consultant has with a customer who may be able to influence somebody in their peer group or in their network? Um, and it's kind of fascinating. I remember when I, I think I first joined LinkedIn in about 2005. Um, and I always found it quite bizarre when you look at how your network um, builds and grows with second tier yeah. and third tier. And then yeah. with tools like Navigator, suddenly you realize that you're combining your entire team's network and yes. going beyond two, two tiers, you're going to a third tier. Um, and the numbers just become astronomical. It's how you then use them and how we're actually then be able to influence the relationship we've got with whether it's uh, influence into the marketplace, um, professionals in the marketplace, existing customers, prospects, I mean, even to the point of family, friends. Um, how do how so, you do so that? You, Is it? Yeah, so you've talked about inbound. Yeah. What, 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 what are you, because uh, uh, I, I talk a lot about the fact that if, if, you, if you're not getting inbound, you, you're not really doing social properly. I mean, I just had a conversation with somebody on LinkedIn where they said, uh, Tim, we're not interested in your services because we've got we've got a LinkedIn sales navigator licenses and that's all we need. And um, it's like, okay, right, you, you don't really understand social selling because for me, um, um, you know, when it, it's about getting, you know, if every inbound I get, I'm not having to make an outbound. Absolutely. So what is it that you're, what is it that you, so you, you're getting inbound then? So yeah, I mean, I think we, we set out on a journey um, to try and build valuable content, um, not just from marketers and marketeer thinking this is good content, we can actually drive activity from this. So we have um, a help series from our support and consultative teams across the products. Um, yeah. So that content is then shared with the broadest possible community that we have. We have, for example, uh, an innovation series where we're trying to provide our customers, but not just our customers, but anyone in the anyone in the, the wider ecosystem who has an issue and wants to be able to try and learn something from. I mean, I think within our organisation we've got about 350 man years um, of consulting experience of implementing financial management solutions. So, if someone's got an issue or someone's got an idea, we've probably actually already helped another organization to actually put that into yes. place. Um, yeah. So content becomes critical. Um, and we are fairly fortunate in a way because we've got these relationships with the team at Sage and we've got uh, content that we're able to share from Sage's point of view. Um, we were obviously going to be building that with the other, with Salesforce and the other apps on the App Exchange to be able to continue that journey of, of how we present and promote what Acuity are and what they can, more importantly, what they can do or what we can do to help, whether it's a small business, whether it's a medium-sized business, or whether it's a larger enterprise account. Um, it's, and for me, it's about giving back, I suppose. It, it's giving people the opportunity. But it, 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 enables, you, it enables you to, to provide also a, um, a sense of community. Um, and, and that community can, can be within the SAGE community. But if people are actually looking for um, uh, a new um, ERP system, or, or, or product that Sage provides, then, then they, when they're doing their online research, they may go, you know, the, one of the reasons why JD Edwards in the past used to do, used to, the, the, you know, used to sign their particular customers, was that, that people brought into the community that JD Edwards basically created. Yeah, I think community is, it's certainly something um, that I've got a lot of time invested at the moment, um, looking at entrepreneurs and startups. Um, and that's simply because the, the speed of um, businesses growth now, um, I suppose in a digital and a technological way, um, is accelerating far quicker than it may have done five, or certainly 10 years ago, five years ago. But 
the speed that startups are now progressing, um, and because we've got this portfolio and follow stages ethos of customer for life, um, if someone was to join the Acuity community using Sage One today, um, we'd be trying to educate them and drive them and help them. Um, and as they grow, obviously the relationship and the rapport and the value they've experienced from working with with a set of people within the Acuity team, um, as they look for alternative solutions, you'd like to think there's a natural progression. Um, and obviously we, we've had some great stories. So we've had a customer who's gone from Sage 50, which is probably the most well-known Sage solution in the UK. Um, and we migrated them through to Sage 200 and we've migrated them through to Sage X3. Um, they're now using X3 across eight different geographies in the world. Um, and there's a great story in there that says it's a Japanese company with a Scottish project manager from their side, a Spanish project manager from our side. So you really do just bring in this culturally diverse but very, very strong ability to execute on projects. And, and do you think? And do you think, from a sales perspective, can you actually place numbers on on you know social selling? You know, the, the, there's a I quote that I always use that the, the person said to me, Tim. You know, the, social selling is all very interesting, but where's the bloody leads? And 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 it, you know, there's all this fluffy stuff about social selling, and it's great. And you know, do I really want my sales force? But can you actually pin um, revenue numbers on this? We we can tie revenue to opportunities um it's, it's growing um but we can certainly tie or we can tie social activity to pipeline um yeah. which is probably seen and, and whether you call it inbound or whether you call it social selling i think they're all part of the same mix um if you're not doing inbound you can't really be doing social selling and vice versa it, it kind of comes as a as part of this cultural shift for organizations right. but um yes. Yes, we've seen opportunities identified via social that have then progressed into the pipeline. They've gone through a normal sales cycle, although probably a slightly accelerated sales cycle, as we've yeah. seen organizations and I guess buyers um, do more research now yeah. before they want to engage with a vendor, never mind before they actually want to engage with a business partner. Um, so yes, we, we, we've got, we, we can probably allocate proportion of our revenue growth towards social. We can certainly... Okay, okay. what we'll proportion would you allocate to it? I'm going to do my Jeremy Baxman <laughs> by asking the question again. I'd say pipelines have increased by 20%. Um, okay. So over a period of the last... So you're month, saying that you've increased your pipeline by 20% by using social selling? And pure social Jeremy. selling revenue, I would say you could probably allocate maybe three, four hundred thousand pounds worth of revenue that we generated purely via social leads. Okay, so that's um so so, so for if you're in the States four hundred thousand oh. pounds six six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. So yeah. Um and I can honestly say that as the as the team, whether they are uh graduates who've joined our business in uh, sort of an SDR or business development role, or whether it's um, the previous set of graduates or it's our more experienced uh, enterprise sales team, they're all going on a slightly different journey and of adopting how social becomes part of their lives. Um, okay. And, they, and they, do, they do get different benefits and they do see different challenges. Um, so this is very much about not. This is not just about putting social in sales. It's again about socialising the, the 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 business. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd love to be able to say in twelve months' time that we have an SDR within a team who doesn't have a telephone, for example. Uh, right. I don't think it's quite ready. I don't think we as a business no. are probably quite ready for it yet. Um, no. But if you think about the the principle of how you can engage with prospects and how you can generate content. Um, we're seeing it faster and faster and faster. And I would imagine that there are in larger corporates, there probably should be people within their SDR or, or business development teams who purely engage via social dialogue. Um, and that they're, and they're, that's their life. Um, as a small business, and, that's and, a bit of a challenge because we still need to what about, follow up. What about attitude as well? I mean, in terms of sales, I mean, do, do you feel that, you know, salespeople need to sit and wait or or is this about getting out of and, and engaging with uh, with customers and, and prospects on social? I mean, how do you see that? 
the experience, I guess, with the, with the team internally um, has been different people, different challenges. Um, breaking okay. breaking um, people's inhibition, uh, even about something as simple as connecting with prospects or connecting yep. with existing customers, um, and the risk that people's perception is: well, if I connect with a with a prospect too early in the sales cycle, is the community of people that I'm already connected with going to come and try and jump into a sales cycle? Whereas I think in the current yeah. environment, um, and and again, do you promote your entire team? Um, that means do headhunters come in? Are your competitors going to come and um, try and remove a, a different individual from your talent pool? Um, hmm. You've got to build on those values within an organization that you're building trust, you're building loyalty, that the team are committed. Um, so it is truly culturally transforming us as a business and how we view things. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, different people are going to progress at different speeds, the same as anything. Um, Okay, but I mean, do do you, are you are you seeing that there's a there's a change in the way that that, that people are talking to customers, and and you know m talking more about success and industry challenges or yeah, I think um we we've always we've never really talked about product um obviously, yeah. obviously the website talks about product because it kind of needs to um but the more we're able to engage with organisations um around their needs, their challenges. Um, solution selling is not new, obviously, and I, and we, I think we're trying to blend this principle of how you take social and solution selling and, and, you, and you kind of use the best parts of, of what has been, I guess, 20 something years worth of expertise coming into how salespeople need to change and how salespeople's behavior needs to change. Um, okay. Different people, different speed, but we're making progress across, across the board on all of them. And and so so what about outside of um, sales? You know, in terms of the support and the development team. So, you know, for for example, you know, if 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 someone places a call, do you then go and look them up on on LinkedIn or or, or what happens? I mean, how how does that work? Truthfully, I I pretty much know. I mean, me personally, I pretty much know everyone I've spoken to because I've researched who they are, what they do, what their interests are in advance of actually talking to most people. Um, yeah. Whether the entire team do it every single time, I don't know, but I do remember, Maybe not, I remember but... a story where one of our experienced salespeople walked into a prospect meeting and someone just went and introduced to him himself in their reception um, by name. Um, and he was kind of, oh, I don't know who I am. It's like, well, do your research and understand who you're going to be visiting, um, who else you might bump into in that particular building. Would it be kind of yep. useful if, you, if you're going to a meeting with um, the finance team to know what the finance director looks like? Because if you, yep. if you see him in the corridor, it's kind of just giving yep. yourself a little bit more knowledge and, and insight about who you're actually going to engage with. So you're not going to get caught short. What happens if you, you might meeting? think they're parking space or something like that? You know, when you when you drive in, <laughs> or, or, or you know, walk into the walk into the lift with them or something like that, and you go, "I wonder who this is." And it's like, well, it's actually the decision maker, and you've just got you know a bit of a cliche, it's a, um, an elevator. But you could at least at least actually say, "Look, I'm I'm Tim, and I'm your your sage representative, and I got a meeting, and and, and you know, we 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 love working with you guys." And how cool would it be, or how useful is it to then be able to in that, in that situation, should it occur, to be able to have digested something that this individual may have written, something that they might have commented on? What happens yeah. if the reason he wasn't actually going to be participating in that meeting is because they've just been acquiring another organisation? How far do you stretch the boundaries? Or, 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 you know, did, you, did you see the rugby sevens game uh, yesterday, or something like that? If you knew that the person was interested in rugby, or something like that. Absolutely. Know? Although it was a bit disappointing not to get cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the semi-final. So oh, the semi was um, that was fantastic, and um, the final wasn't yeah. quite so fantastic. But yeah. So um, okay, so um, I mean, it, you, you you seem to be re re make, making some real progress with uh, with social. Is there anything else that you you feel that you you want to talk about or or say in terms of the you know the the, the way that you're driving social through the organisation? I think the su the support and the network of people that we're that we're now engaging with uh, and seeing the transformation that Sage 
kind of spurred us on a little bit. So there's, there's okay. got to be a, a huge amount of credit given to the team of the transformation that they've gone through. They are going through an amazing, massive transformation. And to, to be able to be in dialogue with uh, a number of the guys on the, and, and ladies on the stage exec, um, so have direct rapport, have direct relationships with these people, they're truly helping us transform our business. Um, mm -hmm. So kudos to those guys um, and kudos to the team, really. Um, it's not been an easy journey for all of them to go on, um, but they've been part of the cultural and sort of like digital change of how we're all trying to behave and how we're all trying to operate. You can't force it on people, um, mm -hmm. but obviously when suddenly one individual sees somebody else being more successful or wondering how they're getting that reputation in the marketplace. Um, if social selling as a, as a concept and a behavior is part of the root of that, then obviously it's yeah. easier for other people to think, hang on a second, why is it taking me six months? Why is it taking me nine months to think about how I'm building my own personal brand and I'm building my own personal um, ethos and approach to my responsibilities, what I'm accountable for. Um, mm. So there's a there's a great ethos from someone you and I both know, which is the the concept of we not me, um, which is something that Nick Goods obviously mentioned to me on a number of occasions. Okay. And that to me sort of sets off a really really simple way of approaching how any business can transform. Um, it's not about Marcus's personal brand. It's not about well Marcus is doing this and Marcus is doing that. We're all trying to do stuff for the I mean, that crazy word, the greater good, which sounds like I've just watched some film with Simon Pegg. But it really is. It's just, if we all think about we, um, everything works. Um, whether you're giving back to someone in your community, whether you're giving back to a, a colleague, um, whether you're providing something, uh, a greater value to a customer. Um, so if you can take the ethos and the culture of we, not me, and sort of work out how you can instill that across your organization um yeah it's been a great journey okay and and you've but you've got further to go <laughs> without that <one. laughs> and, and do you think and will it ever stop or is this is this a journey that you're always going to be going on personally i don't think i'll ever stop um because i think the speed that we're seeing uh technology move the, the speed that we're seeing the vendor relationships move, the opportunity of building different alliances outside of what we've traditionally only worked with Sage. So suddenly there's a whole new world and, and actually the whole new world operates and behaves in a way that actually I think Sage are trying to think this is this is where we this is where we've got to get to. So in, in, yes. in a way I think we've we've been quite fortunate as a small business because actually we we're probably a little bit more agile. Um, and, yeah. and can actually make decisions and get things to change and change behavior far quicker than a larger corporate. Um, but yeah. will it ever change? Will it ever stop? No, don't believe, I okay. don't believe so. Right, Marcus, thank you very much for your, um, um, for the conversation. So where can people find you if, if, if they've watched this video to the um, end? Where is it that people can find you? You can find me on Twitter, at Marcus Leakwood. You can find me on LinkedIn, at Marcus Leakwood. Strangely, I'm the only person called that in the world, so that kind of makes life a bit easier. Um, you could find me on Facebook if you really, really want to. Um, my contact details are all over my LinkedIn profile, so if you ever want to have a chat, okay, then brilliant. just drop me a line. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you. This is purely a plug for you, Tim. Having spent yeah. an awful lot of time thinking about social, learning about social, executing social, I read the book when I was on holiday and I read the book when I was on a plane flying over to Chicago. It reignited so many concepts and ideas in my head. So hats off to you. It's a great book. Thank you. Thank you. That's very, very generous of you. Thank you very much. So thank you for today and uh, thank you for watching um, and um, we'll be around soon. So this is Tim Hughes. Um, I have a book out and um, please check out digitalleadershipassociates.com, see what we're doing um, and also please subscribe to the, uh, the my uh, YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Cheers, Tim. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye.